everyone. Welcome to the 10th episode of XCA Bitecast, a series of bite-sized tips and tricks that you can use in any of your project. In this video, we're going to learn on how to render CVA table with dynamic number of columns from tabular JSON or CSV data. Up until iOS 17, CVA table only supports rendering static number of columns at build time, which means we won't be able to dynamically change the number of columns at runtime. To add a new column, we need to recompile the app and publish a new version to the App Store. Finally, in iOS 18, Apple adds the support to render dynamic number of columns at runtime using CVUI table. Let me show you the demo of the complete project in here. So we have this CVUI multi-platform app. Currently, it's running on macOS. And here at the toolbar, we have this select JSON CSV button that you can use to import the CSV or JSON file. Now let me try to select a CSV file, daily routines. Okay, it is able to be rendered successfully here, as you can see. It has five columns. Nice, right? Now well, let's try another data set. This time is this eclipse.csv. Okay, this has six columns. It works fine. As you can see, it's able to be rendered successfully as well using CFUI native table. And let's try JSON now. A CSV formatted JSON. Let's try this empires.json. Wow, it works fine as well. Amazing. And now let me try another JSON. File one is this Japan Prime Minister. Okay. It's able to, rend to be rendered here as well. This is amazing, right? And this is basically native, rendered using CVUI table. Okay, so this is the complete project that we will implement in this best badcast 10. Okay, so let's just begin. Please download the starter project from the GitHub repository that I've provided in the description if you plan to code along with me. Now let me close this. Okay, so I have downloaded the starter project in here. So let me give you a quick walkthrough. It's a very simple app. So here we only have one view model and there's this view state enum that represents the state of the UI depending on the case, idle, parsing, loaded, and error. So this is the view model. It has several states. So basically, if you see in here, there's only one method to process the result of a selected file from the file importer. So currently it's just uh, initializing the data given the URL and then using a parser to convert the string into the attributed string. It is using the Swift highlighter as spam library. I've provided the link as well if you want to use it in your project. It provides a synthesis highlighting for the code block. Okay. It will convert the string into an attributed string that can be rendered in a CVUI text. So it's very simple right now. And this is the code block view that will render the syntax highlighting. And this is the content view. So currently, depending on the state, it will display the representation of the state. For example, idle, it will tell the user to select the JSON CSV file from the toolbar button. Parsing, it will show progress view and loaded. In macOS, it will use vertical split view. The top panel will be the table that we are going to implement. And the bottom panel will be the code block that will render the code block of the CSV and JSON, okay? So this is the thing that we are going to implement, rendering the JSON CSV table with dynamic columns in CVUI table, okay? So let's begin our implementation. To load our JSON CSV into table, we are going to utilize this tabular data framework. So it's a framework to import, organize, and prepare a table of data to train a machine learning model. So this is provided by Apple since iOS 15 and macOS 12. And we are going to use this data frame struct, which will basically accept a JSON file or CSV file. And then it will arrange the data in rows and columns. It's very, very fast and performant, even with large data sets because uh, it's designed to train a machine learning model, okay? So we're going to utilize this. So let's begin to just, so it's already imported this tabular data. So basically in here, in the do, we already have the data. What we will do in here is basically to 
create a far data frame okay this will be optional and in here we will basically check if the url the pet extension contains this csv then we are going to initialize the data frame we're going to use try so it's a drawing initializer data frame and we are going to pass this uh, csv data okay so what we're going to pass is just the data and then the else if url dot path extension is json we're going to initialize this data frame with the data frame and using this json data initializer in here we're going to use the guard lead data frame else we'll just uh, throw invalid file format let's try to just build for now okay for now let's just print the data frame in the console to see the results of the rows and columns okay we'll succeed it okay we have the app running so let me try to select a json csv so let's use this empires okay let's see here in the console nice it is able to initialize the data frame so this is the columns category content text and date and started and this is the rows okay 34 rows and four columns wow it's very fast as well let's try to use this csv eclipses.csv okay let's see so it has to 224 rows and six columns wow this is amazing this tabular data framework from apple okay so yeah we already have the data frame now so this data frame rows and columns itself are not an array and don't conform to identifiable so it is hard to work directly using them with cview table uh, cview table requires the data to conform to identifiable so let's create a wrapper for this row and column okay so let's create a new swift file and let's give the name of dynamic table data so what we need to do in here let's import tabular data framework and let's begin by in creating a struct struct row wrapper okay so this is wrapper for the row and let's make it this conform to identifiable okay and for the id let's just initialize the id like so uid and the row itself will be this data frame dot row dot element okay and in here let's provide a method to retrieve the string given a column okay so we need the column wrapper for now let's just create a column wrapper as well here make it conform to identifiable as well okay let id uid as well and the uh, column we will use not this one we will use tabular data dot column type tabular data dot column sorry dot any column okay and next one we also going to assign it an index of the column okay So basically this index itself we will use it to retrieve the value at the column index given a row. So that's why in here we're going to accept a column wrapper. Okay. And then we're going to basically return the string containing the value at the particular row index and column index. In here we just need to use card let fall. We're going to get the row. So this is an array we need to pass the column wrapper dot index to get the value if it is nil we just return an empty string to render and if not we're going to render the value using string interpolation okay and yeah we have this now we need to create a container wrapper so let's create a struct dynamic table data 
this also confirms to identity available and let's just initialize as a UID as the default value and now this will hold the array of row wrapper and column wrapper okay columns column wrapper okay and let's create an initializer that accept a data frame data frame okay and then in the initializer let's just map this data frame data frame dot rows dot map we're going to initialize it okay that's for the rows and for the columns data frame dot columns dot map i think uh, what i mean is to use the columns dot enumerated so we can get the index as well so in here we can use the map and then initialize it with the column and index okay so the column itself is will be dollar one and index will be dollar zero so now we have the rows and columns that we can use in the steve ui table now let's create a view for this rendering this table so create a new uh steve ui view okay and give it a name of dynamic table data frame view okay so right now let's just comment the preview and in here we just need to create a let table data so that it will accept the dynamic table data and in here we will render the table passing table data the rows okay because the area row proper and then we will use this table column for each so a structure that completes column on demand from underlying collection of data so this is the new api for table in i 18 that enables the rendering dynamic number of columns at runtime so for each so let's pass table data the columns and here it will give us the column wrapper and in here we just need to declare the table column we will render the name of the column the name i think i forgot one thing when i implement this so in the column wrapper we need to create a computer property in here we just need to get the column dot name okay so now we have the name of the column as the header in here and then in here we need to pass a closer to render the row given the column so now we can just use this text to render using this row wrapper dot string passing the column wrapper so it's going to be able to render the value given the index of the column at that row okay column wrapper okay that's it so this is the dynamic table data frame view which is able to render dynamic number of columns using the dynamic table data from the data frame okay this is amazing right so we're almost there so what we need to do now is just to go to the view model and add a new a short value in the loaded so currently it only has what attributed string now let's add the dynamic table data as well and after that what we need to do let's just remove the print in here we don't need any we don't need any for anymore and in here let's just initialize the data frame yeah, sorry dynamic table data and okay and pass the dynamic data frame and in here we just need to pass this dynamic table data as well let's try to build give will give an error inside this so now we have to assert failure so let's declare it dynamic table data okay and what we need to do is to update this method here content to also accept the dynamic table data dynamic table so let's just use table data and use this dynamic table data okay and in here we just remove this c stack and just render the dynamic table data frame view passing the table data okay and now in here we just need to update this content to pass the dynamic table data and the attributed string so let's do the same for the ios okay this is it 
now we should be able to render the table from the JSON select JSON file and let me select Eclipse nice it is able to be rendered successfully in here okay as you can see so let's try JSON files empires.json works fine wow this is amazing right I've been waiting for this actually the ability to render dynamic number of columns using CFUI table wow it works so that's it for this bad cast 10 and I hope you like this video and it's useful for you as well and you learn a lot from this video so that's it like this video if you like subscribe if you haven't and thanks for supporting me so far and let's keep on being a lifelong learner until the next one goodbye